Hello everyone, my name is Wes, this is part 8 of the Blade Runner analysis. We've only made it to the Rachel scene so far, so we still have a lot left to cover, but there's one thing more that I want to cover about this scene that will come in handy when it comes to understanding the rest of the film and also Philip K. Dick's work. Now, the scene specifically has to do with the story world of Blade Runner, the world that the characters exist in. In chapter 6 of John Truby's book, The Anatomy of Story, he has this to say about creating a story world for the characters to live in. Quote, The statement that film is a visual medium is extremely misleading. While it is true that movies let us see a story on the screen and witness incredible visual effects not possible in any other medium, the visual that really affects the audience in, is in the world of the story. A complex and detailed web in which each element has story meaning and is in some way a physical expression of the character web and especially of the hero. This key principle is true not only in film but in every story medium. End quote. Now with this in mind, let's look at what Tyrell said again at the ending of this scene. Tyrell mentions that Rachel has been given memories in order to give her a personality, and that this, with this bed of personality, she is more controllable. But what does he mean by more controllable? Is Tyrell implying that if one knows all the memories that are implanted in a replicant, then it is reasonable to assume that they will always be able to predict their behavior in the future? This is an important point that can't be overlooked, as it applies not only to the replicants, but also to the humans in Blade Runner's world. What I want to talk about today here ties back into a previous statement that I made in the second video of this analysis, which is that Blade Runner is about how the artificial environment changes the human being and makes them hollow and programmable, like androids. The humans themselves begin to reflect the artificial nature of the environment that they live in. While Tyrell does this manipulation overtly by pre-programming the replicants with specific memories, my question is how is this different than big media corporations pushing their own social or political agenda? There's a quote from Philip K. Dick that this scene brings to mind that sums up the point of this article so clearly that I have to share it. Quote, Today we live in a society in which spurious realities are manufactured by the media by governments, by big corporations, by religious groups, political groups. So I ask in my writing what is real, because unceasingly we are bombarded with pseudo-realities manufactured by very sophisticated people using very sophisticated electronic mechanisms. I do not distrust their motives, I distrust their power. They have a lot of it, and it is an astonishing power, that of creating whole universes, universes of the mind. I ought to know I do the same thing." End quote. In the past couple of years, we've seen this play out in the political realm with organizations like Project Veritas that have blown the cover on companies like Facebook for censoring political views that they consider to be unworthy of being platformed and going on rich hunts for those that they disagree with while at the same time maintaining the motto that diversity stands for everything and everyone that diversity is our strength. We've also seen these same social media companies have so much information on us that they can reasonably predict what links you will click on, what you will buy, and where you will be on any given day. All of this information is available and sold to advertising companies that use this same informa information to manipulate you to buy their product. Philip did a great job of giving us an accurate depiction of what the landscape of the future would look like. The landscape of our world has transformed from a natural landscape that we lived in for millions of years to an artificial one where people are constantly having their attention and consciousness manipulated by outside influences that want to drain you of your money or life force. With corporate media, we can be given memories of things that never happened, and we will defend those memories to the death because they reinforce the stories we tell about ourselves and our identity. 
we then begin to live in these stories that are created by political or social groups and take on the identity they give us. Looking for purpose and meaning in in a world so artificial and devoid of anything transcendent beyond the next dopamine hit supplied to you by your caretakers. If this story is threatened by a piece of information or a person who doesn't agree with our ideology, we lash out. Someone's political opinion is not just a difference of opinion, it is a complete attack on who we are as a human being. And we even have a pre-programmed response of how we are supposed to respond to people who threaten our worldview. The tragedy is in all this, we never actually saw the other human being, just the reflection of our own ideology and beliefs about ourselves, and what follows is a pre-programmed response of how to act. How is this different than being a replicant? What is reality in a world where anyone can use AI-generated imagery and voice to broadcast completely artificial realities, and what happens when we believe those to be true?